Wake up, everyone. You know what time it is. It's Pandora's Box, and tonight we are talking about something that I really have been wanting to talk about, and so has Mikey, and that is, you know who I'm talking about, the films of John Carpenter. So let's bring in Mikey Sutton. What's up, Mikey? You know, I have to ask um, Necron, uh -huh. what, is, what is more horrifying, the movies of John Carpenter, Pandora's Box? <laughs> or the rest of James Gunn, James Gunn's DC slate at San Diego Comic Con. What, what, what's what's going to scare you more? <laughs> I'm going with James Gunn's slate. <laughs> <laughs> I, that that's pretty terrifying to me. That that's a modern terrifying. What what are you what are you going well, with, Mikey? Well, you know, I think James Gunn was. Um, Kevin Foggy will not be at San Diego Comic Con. So James Gunn has a whole stage to himself. I know. Isn't that kind of funny? I mean, <laughs> what a coincidence, huh? That's, that's going to be bad, man. Like, the like, <laughs> go, pupil. Let them see um, your greatness. I don't know. This is weird. I, I, I saw that, and I, that's the first thing I thought. Oh, Marvel's not there? But, oh, so um, James Gunn's going to have the whole platform. Nice. Yeah, whole platform. He's going to probably most likely announce his Superman because apparently they're close now. To mm. uh, to picking who it is, they probably already already chosen which one. Say it yet? Yeah, and they're just holding yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Well, and... Mikey, <laughs> we have a, a special guest tonight. Oh, we do. Yes, yes. <laughs> From the far reaches of the Milky Way galaxy, <laughs> we have. She's flown in to make the Pandora's box, and it's a retro nerd girl. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tell you, I cannot unsee Janet Jackson when I see Retro. Oh. I, I, I can't unsee it. <laughs> you know, Mikey, oh. you have helped me that put the, that, the finger on it, right? Mm. I was like, who does she remind me of? <laughs> Janet Jackson. Oh, really? yes. I cannot oh, unsee wow. it. <laughs> that is really sweet. Thank you. <laughs> and I need everyone to bear with me. I'm trying a new system. Yeah. And, and these. Ear, earphones aren't staying in my ear and I'm just having a mess over here, but we'll we'll deal with it. <laughs> I got a new um new mic so they can't call me the um the the guys in the you know for the airlines with the headsets, the uh, traffic controllers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got rid of my traffic controller thing, but I, I'm getting there. But I'm yeah, it there. sounds great, by the way. You, you, you okay. sound great, yeah. Yeah, yeah. new wonderful. mic. Good old Amazon coming through, you know. What can you say? Right. You sound like one of those those uh, FM rock DJs in the eighties on that. Oh, really? It is Necron. No, no, no. The midnight hour, right? No. You guys midnight. remember Wolfgang Jack, right? Oh hell yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. yeah, it was amazing. And of course, American Graffiti was a big part of uh, that that film. Yes, uh -huh. yes. He... Oh, hi, Sin Havoc. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love this show. <laughs> yeah, we we, we get a, a quite of um different audience, a mix of people on my show. You get yeah, some, you know, yeah. Civil Nation, and you get some metalheads, and whoever else strolls through, you know. This is real diversity. <laughs> you know? yeah, yes. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> you can talk about anything, but but today we're going to talk about John Carpenter, one of my favorite directors of all time, and you know, as great as he is, guys. I, I still think he's underrated. At you this know? point, especially now. Yeah. yeah, especially now. Yeah, yeah, he is very underrated. Um, and, uh, you know, he's actually from a lot of the... the um... <laughs> <laughs> that is, that, that's a great one. That is, that is one of the best chat quotes of the year man <laughs> I, I think oh, we're gonna God. have to give you a star dude very good hilarious. at dj Hammer. 666 six, six. all right fuck off. Uh, it's been on the news all day long like why would you it have has been that? right holy shit <laughs> yeah. you see how small that is oh my god <laughs> Bro, there's no way you can put me in that thing. And say, okay, you're gonna go to the bottom of the ocean now. My ass wouldn't fit in there. Okay, <laughs> so small. You're just like, this is not gonna happen. So, <laughs> like, it's not even problem. Oh, small, dude. I'm six two. There's no way in hell. 
Oh, wow. I didn't realize you were that tall. Yeah, I was <laughs> nowhere sitting there. That's yeah. not happening. <laughs> yeah, and you're pretty tall, too, right, Necron? I'm 6'1". Yeah, I'm pretty a little bit. Yeah, we're pretty tall dudes. <laughs> I think what well, isn't this guy like six one, six two, two? So get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> You're like the perfect height for uh one of Zack Snyder's movies. And there you go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> you all you of never you guys. know, right? <laughs> you, <laughs> you never, never know. know. We 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 weird things have happened. So yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, just, Hell Hammer's just going at... full grim here. Okay, nice. oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no GPS. I was watching, I was watching some um, some uh, conversations with um, with John, and he's super super um, humble. Uh, you know, I I think there is a confidence that he has about how he makes his movies, but I think there's also a humbleness in the way he kind of like um, deals with people. And um, wow. I do like that. I do like that. He's got mm -hmm. so much praise for um, his actors and the people he works mm -hmm. with. So um, who does he do kind like of sound like Zack Snyder? <laughs> Zack Snyder. Exactly. <laughs> he praises everyone that. else, but himself. Yeah. yeah. But himself, <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. That's probably yeah. why I think it was underrated then because I've seen, Interview with him in the past, I just never thought about it because you're right, like, um, you're right, um, Retro, he is like that because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. some directors like to talk about themselves like John never does. It's a really great point, and, and because of that, I guess Hollywood's all driven by ego, right? You have a very big ego, of yeah. course, yeah, it carries, it carries, but if you don't, you know, if you're quiet like Zack Snyder, you know, um, you get kind of lost in the shuffle there, and I think John just doesn't get. Oh, yeah, no. like, oh, you're, oh, yeah, that'll happen. Oh, I'm, okay. <laughs> yeah. All the time. <laughs> yeah, you get used to it. Equipment, okay. right? yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, let's just start from the beginning. From, or, tell me the first John Carpenter film you guys saw, and I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what mine is. Oh, the okay. one that we first saw. Oh, yeah. the first one I saw. Let me see. I, I, pretty sure it would. Be this one of me, Halloween. Yeah, yeah. That'd be my first long, one I saw. I think for a lot of people, that's their first one as well. But not yeah, me, I, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> but go ahead, Retro. For you, yeah. I think I think it was, but I didn't know. I didn't know it was from him. Mm -hmm. Um, that was uh before I recognized who it was. But yeah, that was the first one because it was like ridiculously popular when it came out. Yeah. Oh man, super mm -hmm. huge! And mm -hmm. remember too, it even it seemed like it got even more popular when it hit like cable. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, yes. that's oh, when it yes. exploded. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I don't know how many times I saw it just on regular television. So once it got syndicated for television, oh, um, it. Yeah, it was on all the time. Yeah, see, I missed Halloween theater. That's one of the few big horror films. I don't, I don't know why I missed it. Seventy eight, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was watching a lot of uh, movies theatrically in seventy. I don't know why I missed that one, uh, but I did. And um, oddly enough, when I finally got a VHS player, which was in the 80, 83, had my first VHS player, could not find Halloween. And, and... What? <laughs> oh, man. Now, I, I can go along with Mikey. I think I probably... One of my first rentals had to probably be Halloween too. Yeah, and I, yeah, and, yeah. And so my first one is surprising. Uh, my first one is The Fog. Um, oh. That I saw in the theater, and I don't know why I missed Halloween, but I saw the with Adrian Barbo. Um, that That's why it. you went. You went because yeah. of Adrian well, of course, Barbo. Right. And... <laughs> <laughs> like most people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Both of her Barbos, but anyway. Yeah. But it is such a, an original, spooky little film, very atmospheric. Um, and what I, what I love about the fog is that you can't really compare it with any other movie. It's, it's, it's really, it was really different for its time. Um, and speaking, and I mentioned that John Carpenter's underrated. This film is really underrated. No one really talks about the fog. No. Yeah, it is. It isn't really talked about. I I haven't seen it yet. 
Oh man, it's you haven't scary. seen it. It looks wow. really scary. Uh, and you'll I'm, love it. You I'm love a pansy. It. Uh, so yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take some convincing for me to watch it. But um, I did watch a few key scenes because of course, yeah. you know, it's you it's like YouTube and the internet will show you, will will spoil a movie for you and show you all the, the <laughs> you know, the big scenes. So I've seen a lot of those scenes and they look it looks really creepy, you know. It's those, definitely creepy. Ah, with the glowing eyes and the yeah. fog. I'm like, you you can't see anything in in the fog anyway. And so um, yeah. and if I know um the pacing of John Carpenter's film, I know it's gonna be creepy, like even when nothing is happening, because that's yeah. you know, he's got that down. That buildup of dread and tense intensity yeah. and dread is definitely in the fog like it just keeps building and building and building and building and it's like yeah the fog just keeps creeping in more and more and more right yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah and didn't john carpenter do the soundtrack for the fog because people don't discuss that either he does his own music which um, is Halloween. No, I, yes I, he, oh i'm gonna see if he did i think he did do it for that one this a couple of things he didn't do. Let me see if I wrote that down. Um, like I, I don't own any soundtrack, but the fog would be one I would like to own because I love. Yeah, the, I, I bet you he did because he it was sounds probably, like it. Yeah, yeah it, it seems like it. I could find out now. in a few seconds, actually. Yeah. Um, Some people up. are going Prince of Darkness too, and that's another one. Oh yeah, they're ready to totally. Yeah. Oh, I and mean, Janet the, Janet Lee was in um, the fog with her daughter. Janet, uh, yeah, Jamie Curtis, right? Yeah. So that was kind of nice to see them at the same time. Now, Adrian Bar uh, Barbeau was uh, had just gotten married to John Carpenter, but I believe his one of his assistants. Um, he had a relationship with her like a few months earlier, and so <laughs> it's kind of weird on set with the two of them. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but well, he, I had no idea they were gonna get out. Cause that blows my mind. I'm like, whoa! I had no idea they, he was with Adrian Barbeau. No yeah, idea. yeah, they had just yeah. gotten oh, yeah. married like a few like weeks before, and oh, her name is Deborah Deborah Hill. She helped. Um, she co-wrote. Um, the fog with him and um, yeah they it was kind of a tough thing for her to have to Wait, sit in did, and, and watch the whole thing Deborah happen <laughs> didn't he end up marrying Deborah Hill later am I crazy oh I didn't know that yeah did, that did name sounds familiar that? she was part of season of the witch wasn't she that, that, I... Um, that I don't know yeah, I'm gonna do a search. I think she was still a part of all. Yeah, I think she was. Maybe she was a producer with them. Yeah, yeah I, I thought I saw her name mentioned as well when I was doing yeah. some Deborah Hill. I'll just put Jane. She was probably a producer, right? Because I know, I know. And yeah, she was a producer on this film too. She's she was a, film, a producer on a lot of his films. They were they just had a great working relationship. Um, and so it, it got, um, it, it became more than just. Uh, <laughs> Take this out. They both had a, a loved one, a producer named Deborah, Deborah Snyder. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> wow. Very interesting. <laughs> Like I didn't even put the two two together. Like that's crazy to think about. Wow. Yeah, she she they did not get married, but they had a working relationship. She yeah. was the producer. Yeah, so yeah. they would. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah, and, and it said um, they co-wrote Halloween together, and she focused on the babysitter side of the story more, and he focused on the Loomis Michael Myers side of the story more. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so there you go. Isn't that wild? That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, so the fog was my first John Carpenter film, um, and but the first, let's just go way way back in John Carpenter's career. Um, I love this movie. I, I I love talking about this film. I saw it like nine or ten times. Um, it's a movie that 
people are familiar with the movie that they came with, but not, they're not familiar with this film. They're familiar with Alien. They're not, com- they're not familiar with the prototype for Alien. Mm-hmm. It was written by the same guy. Um, that, the guy's name was Dan O'Bannon. He wrote yeah. Alien. But the original script was a comedy called Dark Star. Um, yeah. They're the same plot. But it's just, you know what? That cross, <laughs> I bet James Gunn to have to have seen Dark Star. It's a wacky. Uh, you, oh, it's, no. oh, you're so right. It does that, have the same flavor. He has flavor. to be a fan. He yeah, has to be a it's fan. right up his yeah. alley. Right yeah. up his alley. It's totally Guardians of the Galaxy type mm-hmm. of wackiness. It's this wacky as, stuff going on. It's yeah. funny as hell. That you know, spoiler alert: the ending that that one of the astronauts becomes a silver surfer, kind of, and, and it has that song Benson, Arizona. I, I was in Arizona when I, I filmed, hit videotape, and I watched it. That song I'll never forget because I lived in Arizona when I was watching it. Um, that movie, um, it's G rated, but there's some scenes in there like he gives a finger, like how does get a G rating, and then he's got the um, the Porno magazine stuff on the, on his wall. <laughs> they got a G rating, you know, like he got that past the ratings board. The, Mikey, we discussed this before. The rating system used to be so much more liberal. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Like, what PG there, in nineteen seventy eight is yeah. not what PG no, is now. No, for no sure. not at all. Uh-uh. Yeah. So, um, in uh, I used to read Starlog magazine and you know Fangoria and. They always mentioned Dark Star. That was a student film that he directed when it was uh, at the USC, I think it was. That he was yep, from. USC. You can't know, remember this shit. But mm-hmm. anyway, um, Dan, O'Bannon, Dan O'Bannon was his roommate, I think. Yeah. And he wrote Dark Star. And so I was like, what the hell is Dark Star? So when I finally got a VHS player, it's one of the first films I rented. I found Dark Star, but I couldn't find Halloween. It was weird, right? Oh, uh, wow. And I'm Wow. Really, Hilarious. If you guys have not seen Dark Star, a scene where the where the guy gets sexually assaulted by a giant alien beach ball, uh, yeah, it is weird. <laughs> it. Yes, it is hilarious. Yeah. But okay, it's the um, same same plot as Alien, but he just he just like oh, just make it serious, and that's where Alien came from. Mm-hmm. And okay. that switch Necron remind me of Dreamwalker because Dreamwalker was a comedy. Oh uh, yeah, and then I made. Oh, it at more. first, yeah, yeah, it was That's a comedy. I, tr- I tried. It was my dark star, right? Um, then Kate said, "I love." All this, and she she loves that Sabrina show on Netflix. I watched it, and I said, "What the hell am I doing a comedy for? I'll do horror." And that's that's how Dreamwalker came about. But it kind of reminds me of Dark Star. Just Dan O'Bannon felt it didn't work as a comedy. So he took that same story and made it alien. Yeah, that, and that was uh, because the uh, critics really went in on uh, on that, uh, yeah, that yeah. movie. And that like, literally ripped film. it apart. Yeah. yeah. yeah they ripped it, it apart. And he was like, okay, well, I'm going to change, uh, change course. <laughs> but Imagine uh, how that worked out well for him, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, it, actually, uh, he was... It, uh, Dan O'Bannon at the time... He really was the person who did a lot more of the like special effects work on mm-hmm. Dark Star, um, yeah. and so um, a lot of people were interested in having him do special effects for him. And in fact, mm. he did some special effects for George Lucas. And uh, what was it in particular? This is the kind of a little side story about Dan O'Bannon. Was that um, Hudarowski, um, who was planning on doing the movie Dune? Um, decided that he wanted Dan O'Bannon to work on his version of Dune and um, put him in touch with Giger and a couple other people, Mobius as well. Wow. And so these Ooh, guys... I did not know all this. Yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> Holy shit, that's big. <laughs> yeah, and so the, the initial like uh, aliens like screenplay and everything, he grabbed those guys and brought them on board. Um, and then, wow. you know, it, it sort of like created like a whole nother uh, thing with aliens, which was awesome. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, um, I can't, Ron Cobb, I think it was a designer, right? Because I know he worked on Dark Star. Uh, then he went yeah. on to, he, he, I know he uh, worked on Conan the Barbarian, um, some other things, but he, Dark Star he, was also where he started as well. So 
that film has so much talent behind the scenes. It's, it's yeah. insane, you know? Yeah. It was like, what, 1974? They were all just like, yeah. what, still in college? Still something? in college, yeah. That, yeah. that was like his thesis or something like that I mean, before <laughs> him to graduate. So how crazy is that? Um, All sax bulletins. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Rachel oh, yeah. really knows her shit, man. She's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes my brain works. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Retro. Okay, now, you know, we talked about, you know, the fog and, um, yeah. I mean, we can probably, Halloween, obviously, yeah. <clears throat> the, the big slasher movie mm -hmm. that really doesn't show a lot of slashing in it most of it is implied to be yes. off camera yep. but, um, which almost kind of makes it better because your imagination uh, runs wild on like yeah what the hell is you know oh my god you know to what's me, going on there? Halloween. i mean just in my opinion yeah it, it's the classic of the classic they, they mm -hmm. can't top it i mean i know they went in a more gorier route later on in some of the later halloweens but the mm -hmm. first one still the 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 director does the great job of not really showing you the gore and making you imagine it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough thing to do. And of course, just that music, I mean, yeah. music alone. Oh God. That's, yeah. the, that's the tone, you know? Like, yeah. Oh my and, God. It, and it just keeps going. Cause it, at first when you hear it, you're like, okay, this is interesting. And then it just keeps cycling over and over and over again. And you're yeah. like, okay, when is it? Oh my God. It's going to, what's <laughs> it just kind of drives you insane while you're watching. How can what one note, down, down, down. It just like it, you know, like it just keeps building the tension up, man. Mm -hmm. Speeds up and everything. It's just it sounds really unsettling, right? Um, yes. It's you so know, I have a little Halloween story for you, for you two. Um, oh. My cousin, my girl cousin, was really into mm -hmm. horror films. This is back in '85, and um, she never saw Halloween. No. Oh. So one day, because in the Philippines we used to rent like 15 movies a week. Because there are only 10 cents in American money to rent movies. So we read 10 cents. Jeez. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> I love it. I've got a dime. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can go crazy with that even back then. Yeah, oh, God, totally. And then since the movies were all bootlegged, they're like unlimited copies, right? So you <sighs> can, so that 10 cents, you can keep it for a week. You don't care. Because they, they, they have like, like 50 copies in the back anyway that they, that they made themselves. Um, and so we went and saw, I we ran Halloween, and she felt it wasn't gory enough. It was like, there's no words for the blood and everything. She was disappointed. Uh, ah. It goes to show you that film was very, very reined in. It was not. Mm -hmm. um, it it was gets a reputation it. of being yeah. just like, just like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It gets a reputation yeah. of being super gory, and it's really not. I mean, really it's not all yeah. implied off camera. Yeah, there's, there's, blood, and, there's blood on the knife, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's way more scarier to me, and especially, I mean, that last, you know, there's kind of like a scene where, um, it, all of the bodies are all like in one room almost, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like, wow, this is gross. Um, and I, I think it's just. It, it, interesting. I, I like that movie a lot. It just does so much. Just for the time, it's perfect. Well, yes. I think the one of the most effective, eerie scenes in Halloween was when the cops arrived that little kids holding a knife. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that oh, movie. yeah. The babysitter. Oh, yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> it's just disturbing. It's creepy, yeah. Frazier has a question. Who's more famous, Stephen King or John Carpenter? Well, I Stephen King. I Stephen King. Yeah. Stephen yeah. King. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I think it's because of all those his names and all those books and everything. So. Yeah. Also, there's more output from Stephen King. He's written more books than John Carpenter has done movies. But hey, we're oh, going yeah. to combine the two during a show today for one of the films. Jamie Lee's performance. Yeah, that's true. It's excellent. Oh, yeah. It's great. Oh, this is a great answer. Rat is more famous for you. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Okay, and DC Talk, he says he loves The Fog. I think The Fog is probably one of my um, top for um, John Carpenter. It's mm. just, and then again, um, retro, it's not gory. Like if you actually watch yeah, it's it. Not. Yeah, it's I, not from gory. what I can see, a lot of people get snatched and, and then The Fog happens and 
but it's just the glowing eyes and the, it, <laughs> it, it's kind of gets me. I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> Moral of the story is um, don't double cross pirates. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna get their bounty one way or another, right, Mike? Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the glow, cool. the glowing eyes. I, 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 I picked that up for Dreamwalker as well. I used to have on Facebook. I had um, the one of the glowing eyes pirates as my avatar. Like oh, really? Yeah, I just thought I it looked so that's cool. Crazy good, like scary, um, but cool at the same time. Yeah, and and that one too has an excellent performance by um. Adrian Barbeau and Jamie Lee Curtis too are fucking killer in it too. Especially when she has to go on top of the lighthouse and fight fight with him. Remember, Mikey? Oh. That that scenes is intense, man. I think we lost oh. Mikey for a second. That's okay. No, we're talking about John Carpenter Frazier. Um, not not Hellraiser. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want I want I want to discuss... let's talk about Hellraiser. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. He's I just, tried. I, I just realized something. Like like Zack Snyder, um, John likes her. The same actors like Zack Snyder does. And I wanted to bring up probably the most influential. Okay, maybe not one of the most influential for a second under Halloween is Escape from New York. Uh, mm -hmm. With Kurt Russell, yeah. And not only that's not his only film with Kurt Russell either. Yeah. No, no, he loves Kurt Russell, man. Yeah, they're great he, together. I mean, okay, I'm just gonna be honest with you. When I was a kid and I saw Escape from New York, I basically wanted to be Snake Plissken. Yeah, I think I we was all like that. Dude's <laughs> the coolest dude. He's so, so that's bad. why I'm kind of wearing this little. <laughs> Oh, I, you know, I'm trying to do. I just need the muscles. That's the only problem. But other than that, I got the hair and I got the shirt. <laughs> in the eye patch, you know. Yeah, I should have put an eye patch on tonight, man. Just talking to my grassy when I, voice. When I saw Escape from New I York, don't I was do like, favors. <laughs> yeah, when I saw Escape, I didn't see it until I was on cable. I missed it in theaters. Oh, that came out '81, right? Um, yeah, yeah, '81. '81, yeah. I, I, Man, eighty one a year. Um, I, I was too busy watching Superman two and um, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark came out. That oh, shit, what a summer that was! What a fucking summer eighty one was, man. Oh my god. Yeah. Raiders Dude, of the Lost Ark eighty two just knocked it out of the park. No, eighty one, eighty two, eighty eighty four. Those three, those three. Yeah, yeah, eighty four. Incredible years for movies there. Um, so I saw that on cable though. <laughs> the first thought that hit my mind when I saw Snake Snake Plissken was like. This the Fury, you know, the, the whole eye patch, <laughs> the attitude, you know. And come on, John Carpenter had to have been a Marvel Comics fan. There's no way that was oh, not yeah, dude. inspired by Nick Fury in some way. <laughs> yeah. I, I just remember seeing, um, I didn't see it when it came out. That wasn't yeah. one of the movies my mom wanted to see. Or yeah. at least she didn't express that to me. Um, but I saw it actually like only about five years ago. Oh really? Wow! Yeah. Wow! Yeah. Okay. Well, let's hear what you thought. I yeah, mean. tell us. Oh, you... I, I, I loved it. it. It was a, it's a bit harsh, like, and I understand that's the world that that they were building. Yeah. This, yeah. this really dark, brutal, nasty world where everybody was just after each other. Just there was no. Yeah. Uh, no uh, loyalty among thieves, if you will, and it was just um, it, it was insane. I mean, <laughs> it was like Death Island. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> okay. Battle Royale, uh, pretty much, right? Just yeah, I actually survival. saw Escape from L.A. before I saw Escape from New York. Which oh, was really so you might have had a different impression going in to Escape from New York from Escape from I L.A. Knew I knew that they changed the tone. I, yeah, okay. I knew that the tone was going to be different. I didn't know it was going to be that raw um, and brutal. And I was, I was fine with this. It's like, oh, okay, this is the world we're going to be in? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. um, and it, it was really great. I mean... There's a disturb a couple of disturbing scenes in it, and I'm sure you know there's some people are like you know cut that out of the movie or probably want to edit it out or they'll probably want to say like uh, the movie is insensitive. But there's a scene where 
a girl is being um, accosted and uh -huh. Snake Plissken, uh, our hero, <laughs> just kind of just looks at it and just looks the other way. And so I thought that was really interesting what he was saying about that character. Like he doesn't really care about other people. He's not in it for the morals. No. He's in it for uh, to get out of the situation and to deal with the situation. And so much of his adventure is a dead end. Um, you know, it, he really um, it shouldn't have made it out of there. I mean, it, it was a death yeah. sentence. So I did love that, um, that theme. And it, that theme um, of kind of being trapped in somewhere is present in a lot of his films. Like even the fog, the fog has it. Mm -hmm. Kind of everyone hiding. Um, Prince uh, of Darkness has it too. Uh, what what other? And the, the big one is the thing that really. The thing uh, attack uh, mm -hmm. attack on pre the precinct precinct movie. Which one was that? Was that, was that? Yeah, attack on precinct thirteen. Yes, yes, that one is another one where everybody's trapped in and then trying to get out. And everybody's trapped in New York City trying to get, you know, out. Or trying to get out of the, the, the New York jail. Well, yeah. not even a jail, man. Like you said, it's this <laughs> some you go place to die. they put all the criminals. Yeah, you know, you, you survive till you die. Um, hello, hello to Skywalker. Um, hey, Sky. oh, hey, Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, he's in the chat. He is here. I have to wonder because I heard that Times Square was a really, bad, really, really bad place. In the seventies and eighties, was really sleazy oh. and dangerous. I have to wonder how much of that inspired John Carpenter. I, I would yeah. say it had to. I think it had to. It had yeah, to. Yeah, it had right? to. Like, man, if they don't clean this up, you know, it's going to be like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was before it was bad. Before it was cleaned up, you know. Yeah, that was before Ed Koch was there, and I think yes, he yes, did yeah. quite a bit of work to make it better. Yeah, yeah. And before then, it was just it was really going. To hell in a half handbasket, really. Yeah. Um, and and I I lived there when I was in the set. Oh the wow! I, I, I didn't never, know that. Really, I've oh, never yeah. been to the East Coast. Yeah. Um, um it, it was pretty bad, and then uh, like by the, well, I would say eighty two, it started to you know look better, started to get better, um, and. <laughs> I, I, I saw that movie and said, you know, we got to do something. This is I, bad I, for tourism. I, 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 I got to say this because I cannot imagine Retro existing in 82. She looks way too young. Oh, uh, yes, it it just blows me in my like, what? Get some fountain of youth somewhere because it just blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Ryan, and I, we, you can tell we've been around there, you too. You know. Yeah. Oh, no, you guys. <laughs> it, it's the lights. It makes me look younger. We're not worried. We're not worried. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to the East Coast, so I've been to the Far East, but not the East Coast. Um, but I've, I've heard stories of Times Square back in the 70s and early oh, 80s. No, it was this is just really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, we, we would go, my mom would take me to Times Square to, to go see um, different movies. And it was, it was really, it was wild there. Sometimes you would just get a whole bunch of tourists and that would be fine. But like some of the other alley like streets are just look, were terrible. So it, it improved a lot over the years. Um, and and so it's kind of, it's really super, super touristy now, of course. But yeah, um, it, it wasn't. Uh, uh, that great uh, back in the seventies. Back in the seventies, yeah, I mean, so, and you have all those black exploitation movies that show <laughs> New York City and the, and the way it looked. It wasn't really that great. It was like a time capsule now. Those movies because they were shot in location. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see all the all the sleeves. Dude, I mean, when I was a, a kid, and we see movies about New York, we you know it was the vigilante. The Warriors, you know, it wasn't yes. oh, a yeah. pretty picture of that. You know, no, I always, no. to, to me, I kind of thought, this is cool. You know, that place seems <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, uh, man. It's gritty. <laughs> what was that, Mikey? If you were packing some heat, you'd be cool, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you know me as a kid. I I, I have images of me, you know, like I was going to be snake plus. <laughs> 
<laughs> whatever. But I thought, yeah, man, I'll have a gun. I'll be able to get it. I'm thinking about <laughs> movies like like Miss Forty Five. I should be guys ever seen that film? Mm-hmm. Abel Ferrara, um, early '80s against that whole dirty New York <laughs> type of thing. Go go see Miss Forty Five. It's like a revenge film um, from like oh, '80s, and it takes place in New York, and it has all that kind of you know sleazy, dark, you know, mm-hmm. um, a vintage New York. <laughs> so yeah, another uh, one I thought was really there was two Al Pacino movies that I thought was really like Serpico was really yeah like had that flavor there's there's one i can think of right now easily uh cruising have you seen cruising oh and al pacino yeah yeah that that's was. a rough one that's, that's a, a one that's a yeah. one watcher that's a one <laughs> if, if you can even handle if you can handle one viewing of cruising <laughs> oh my god yes you're talking <laughs> Remember all the warnings that came with that movie? Yes, there are tons. Yep. <laughs> that Bruce. that film would not exist today. No way. How was that, <laughs> no, how was that no. even made? That was even back amazing. then. It was like pushing the envelope. You were only pushing wow. the envelope. <laughs> I don't think it's even on streaming. If you too scared to carry that movie. <laughs> oh, and then Skywalker. If maybe if you didn't see that, that got me a real mic now. That's why I probably sound better. You sound really great. Not yeah, it oh, sounds fantastic. My and, air traffic yeah, yeah. controller um, headset has been retired, and I got a real microphone. So, yeah. yeah. You know, I just thought of a topic. Um, why don't we do an episode about sleazy New York? About movies that... that oh, show that. 70s. Yeah, dude, yeah, that'd 70s, be a good one. You know, that show that side of, that we don't see anymore. You mentioned the, the Warriors, a great film, Walter Hill. I love that movie. Oh uh, man, I'm a super fan of the Warriors. Oh my god, that movie. Oh. That, that, that's why I think of when you when you say like terrible New York. I think of the Warriors. This, this brings me back to um, <laughs> to um, our John boy Carp- John Carpenter. When uh-huh. I- yeah, because I'll get on a Warriors tangent and I'll talk about how <laughs> awesome Ajax is and all that, and we'll be here all night. <laughs> but what I didn't know was that he wrote scripts sometimes because he was sometimes he he uh, there were parts of his career where it wasn't really being treated very well, um, especially after um, the thing uh, and also oh. after Escape from New York. Um, so one movie that he wrote. Um, he wrote for um, was this movie that shows New York and it's kind of griminess just a little, but also oh. the, the sexiness of New York too was a movie that I absolutely love called eyes of Laura Mars. I don't know. Oh, he, wow. He, wait, he wrote that. Yeah. He co-wrote it. I had no idea. No yeah. clue. Wow. That yeah. Is Talented man. Uh, yeah. That movie is so good. That's a great I, film. Yeah, it's a it's a a nice thriller, um, with um, uh, Tommy Lee Jones in it, and um, it, it just is. Who was that actress in that film? Um, I'm, she her name is escaping me, but um, uh, gosh, I should know because she's like one of my favorites. Yeah, she was. Just- um, I mean, it'll take me a moment to find her. I think I saw that on cable about 30 years ago. Yeah. That used to be like one of those HBO yeah. um, regulars. Yep. yep. It was. Yeah. Here it is. Um, Faye Dunaway. That's it. My oh, camera. geez. Yeah. She's a classic. Yeah. Work. yeah. And, and, uh, Brad uh, Dorif is actually in it. And you know who else was one of the writers in the story? Tommy Lee Jones. Whoa. Wow. He must wow. have been young at the time. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, I love that movie. And at the end of it, Barbara Streisand sings this really incredible song that I always loved. Um uh called Prisoner, and it's just really amazing. Are you listening to all the names you're dropping in this movie? Like it's a who's who. Um, of yeah. Like, <laughs> of, of like famous people from then. It's crazy. <laughs> I know it's, it's one of my favorite movies. That is uh, Eyes of Laura Mars. You know what um, is one of my favorite movies? The Thing, <laughs> by the way. Oh, okay. we, we gotta touch on this before we. My god, dude, yeah. man, this movie. Mm-hmm. 
I tell now, you. Now, Retro, did you watch that one? I did not because it's too <gasps> it's too scary. I can I can I tried, but I have seen like probably all of the scary parts anyway because there, every single I would goes. say it's actually scary as it's more intense. Intense, yeah. Yeah, but it's intense. Retro don't feel bad because I have a story about the thing. So <laughs> um, I think it is that's one of the top five best movie going experiences I ever had. Wow. 82, the film flopped when it came out. It came out with E.T. You don't want to see a, a dark Oh, no, man. Alien alien alien, 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 one nice alien. alien, alien yeah. yeah. People and, went in on that movie so oh, yeah. hard. And the critics didn't get it. Not, now it's a classic. Back then it was not a classic. Mm-mm, it was so, so I saw destroyed. Thing, uh, I saw it at the base theater. Uh, Look Air Force Base in Arizona. Um, August 82, I still remember it. So we, the theater's packed, right? It was one night, the only showing showing for one night. So we go in there. And <laughs> the, these G, these filled with GIs, man. Some of them had uniforms on still. Like, this really fucking scary. That kind of, that's not going to scare me. Yeah, yeah. We're not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not pussies here. Like They're like bragging about how this film's not going to scare them, right? Oh, boy. My, my, my wife said it was scary. Come on. It, 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 it film can scare me like this, right? So the movie starts. And and if you've seen the movie, it starts well with these guys trying to shoot this dog in, 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 in the Arctic. Like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, here? like, why are they trying to shoot that dog? <laughs> shoot, shoot a dog, right? It's... <laughs> And so anyway, it gets to the the blood test. This is like the best scene in the film. They're, they're, they're taking a blood test to see who has the <laughs> alien inside, right? So they, the, the suspects are all tied up, right? And they're all sitting next to each other. And all the, the GI is like, yeah, this film's not scary at all. What is this stuff? They're just blood tests. Come on. And I'm sitting beside these dudes. That are, everybody's bragging like it's no big deal, right? You get to the blood test scene, right? So each of them, they're testing the blood to see if they have an alien inside them, right? And so one of the tests, they open up that little plate thing, and they and all of a sudden, the thing comes out of the blood. And, and the GI is like, fuck this shit. <laughs> they're, they're like screaming. But, pop but it was so done so well, right? It was so well. Weird and whoa, what the hell? And, and they, the, the thing is like coming out of the blood, right? And it's and it's climbing all over that dude. And he's like, get, get me out of here. Get me out of here. And he's like trapped in his chair. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's handcuffed next to him in the chair. Like, oh, he can't get away from it. <laughs> all these crazy. macho dudes were scared as hell. They were like <laughs> screaming, yelling. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing my ass off, right? Just, <laughs> I'll never forget that, man. Never forget that. They're like some are leaving, like you, you know, like please do just bragging the whole time that they are gonna scare them. They get this blood test scene. Yeah, they're they're gone, you know. Um yeah. I have seen polls retro where people were asked what is the scariest um part of any film you ever seen. It's, it's always in the top ten, the blood test scene. The blood oh, test because really? it is so intense, like getting neck it is really intense. Mm-hmm. Uh, Skywalker yeah. says nothing beats the electric yeah. paddle scene. That, that oh, that, scene is, oh, that, I've seen that. That scene. was awesome. That was because that's so unexpected. It, it yeah. really does startle you because you're not expecting anything in that scene like that. And you're like, what <laughs> the? The chest, the chest opens that. up and that, that, that head pops out. Like like a, <laughs> yeah. The head with like spider legs. <laughs> I mean, what, dude, what is this, 1982? It's, I mean, this is Eight weird two. stuff, man. Like, yeah. no one's seen anything like this before. No. That, I believe the beginning Routine of the movie. did the, the effects for this one. Oh, Rob yeah. Botten. Yeah, Rob Bottom. Yeah. yeah. Classic. Practical yeah, effects, incredible. yeah. Remember the dog transformation at the beginning? Like, what the yes. heck was that? Like, what was, it's still weird to this it's day. It's still weird to this day. And yep. I love the fact they use practical effects and makeup effects. I mean, they were they were really they were very real. But they're um, still the holding CGI. up. They're holding it. Yeah. yeah. They're CGI still holding can't, up. CGI can't pull that off because it's no. it looks so real, right? Um, yeah. Like if you compare the CGI effects being done in the '90s when it was yeah. just they used it for like everything. Oh yeah. Versus like some of the stuff that was used in the eighties and the nineties, oh, yeah. eighties uh, and the seventies. It's oh, like that stuff really holds up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, because it's real material, you know, and if you pull it off yeah. well, it looks real. You know, you're yeah. not, you know, 
computer graphic. I mean, you, and what they can do with the lighting and all that too, of the scene and all that. And later on, you know, you yeah. can make it look pretty damn real. I think and, we're still trying to figure it out because there are certain mm -hmm. uh, like movies even today. And I'm like, you know, there's so many things you can do that look really lifelike, but yeah. some things you, they just haven't figured out completely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because a certain sense of like, um, immediacy when it looks like you can touch it, right? When you can physically touch it. Mm -hmm. um, like that dog's head splitting open, the alien coming out. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was creepy as hell. I love the fact that the alien didn't really have an ending. Like you didn't know who which which of the two had the thing inside them, Kurt Russell or the other guy. And they're just like, we're just waiting it out. They're just going to wait it out to see you. Which one was infected? One of them was infected, but you didn't know which one. Yeah, you wouldn't know. You didn't know. You it ended know. on a, a cliffhanger, kind of. So, I heard said, um, rumors that he's actually thinking of making a direct sequel. To he that. is, but to bring that up, and I'm kind of saddened by it because I don't want to know how that ended up. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like, I want to leave it to your imagination, like which one had the thing, but if they had a sequel, it'll answer that question, though. But, you know. And. It's funny because on um, Necron, some of the critics who didn't like it, they compared it to the because the thing is a remake. There was a mm -hmm. the, the thing from nineteen fifty five, I think it was. Uh, nineteen fifty one. It was really there you go. Really good. Oh, the the original. The original Howard yeah, Hawk, and, right? And that was a, that one was a plant creature. Yeah. Love that one. And so they were comparing it to that, but damn, man, this. Oh, this, Skywalker's yeah. making some good points. Uh oh. Keith David oh. definitely was the alien. Okay. No cold smoke coming out of his mouth. Wow, great end. point. Yeah, that's what a lot great of fans point. are saying about the ending, that you mm. didn't have any, um, you couldn't see his breath, so obviously he was uh, an alien. Great there's point. Also a, there's also a theory that the alien this whole time has been trying to get away from the humans so they can get off the planet. You know, it's trying to build its sh its ship at the end. So I was like, the humans were stopping it from leaving the planet. They're like, "Will you just leave me alone so I can get back to my ship and <laughs> get out of here?" I, I know. I wonder if the sequel is going to be about them under and their home world. I wonder if that's going to be. Ooh. Right? Well, sure. What what with John Carpenter's imagination? What he could pull off with today's technology? Who knows what what yeah. he's coming up with? But you know. Obviously, Alien, I mean, Alien, the thing is a mega classic, so. Yeah, and he yeah. seems to be enjoying doing what he's doing, which is, like, collecting checks from, uh, <laughs> from yeah. you know, uh, for doing nothing. And uh, also, he's, like, uh, enjoying his music, so I don't know. Yeah, so he, he saw that. He tours and does his, his movie themes and all that and his rock and roll band and mm -hmm. just having a good time. Yeah. But, what about this one? He, um, I think he changed, changed course a little and, and made this movie. Yeah, big trouble. Yeah, well, just before you get to that one, because uh -huh. he did, and I, and if you're gonna mention it later, he did do, um, Starman directly after the. That's thing right. In I, order I did to not. please the you know general audiences and be mm -hmm. good in with the studio, so he could, and then. After that, he started doing more studio films. Um, so that that was just uh, a little tidbit. But yeah, let's get into that awesome movie, uh, The Big Trouble in Little China. Was, yeah. Well, speaking the, of the movies, Star that inspired, Man was uh, yeah. Star Man was like what his his romantic movie, I guess. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But yeah, but yeah, yeah. What we're but, gonna move. What do you need yeah. to say, Mikey? Speaking of movies that inspired James Gunn. Um, this movie, you can really see the influence on Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, yeah, oh, I, yeah. I, lo I love this film. Um, so oh, yeah. It's, it's a great movie, man. It's another mm -hmm. banger. Yeah. I think between um, this this movie uh, and, of course, he's like he like literally took lines right out of this film. Um, because there's that scene where, um, you know, the who line, that's in... Big Trouble in Little China um, at the end where he says, well, Jack Burton, you know, is going to tell you such and such. And he's the guy's like, who? <laughs> 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 and that's directly in. Oh, even uh, you said. oh, yeah. 
And I believe that he was also inspired by the original, um, the Flash Gordon movie in 1980. Yeah. There's a lot of... Um, oh, yeah. a lot of that oh. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. That's a great yeah. one, too. Yeah. But, too, um, Kurt Russell, like, goes, you know, from Snake Plissken to this yeah. guy, who's, like, yeah. I, the two polar opposites. Absolute yeah. opposite. <laughs> yeah. And, and he was doing a John Wayne impersonation, but sort of, like, the uh, like doing the opposite of what John Wayne or uh, representing <laughs> the opposite of what John Wayne was doing. Um, and, and this stems from... Um, John's love of westerns. He actually wanted to make web westerns, but unfortunately, they have become out of favor in Hollywood to make when yeah. he started in, in the business. So, uh, it, all of his films actually have a little flavor of the western in baked inside. You know, including those movies in which you're kind of trapped in a place and you have to, you know, stand mm -hmm. off with um, with an approaching enemy trying to invade. And you know, Escape from New York got no love. Yes. He didn't do no, it. no, it didn't. Not at all. Me and my brother loved it. Yeah, Sky, we, we just talked about Escape from New York, but yeah. you're, you're welcome to comment all you want, man. But um <laughs> was Big Trouble in China? Was that a hit? I don't even remember. No. no it well. was not. 80, 80, uh, was it 86? It was 86, right? Uh I think I believe so. That. Yeah, I believe you're yeah. correct on that. Let me just I can double check for sure. And, and, and it had two like, you know, concepts a lot of people weren't used to, like different spiritual planes. And like, I guess you would say a multiverse yeah, type of situation, you know, with them, um, with, the uh, you know, the gods and all that. And the, mm -hmm. yeah, the different realms they would go to. I, I thought it was a cool movie and a fun movie, man. It, fa and, it faced a lot of trouble, yeah, a, a lot of challenges. It faced a lot of challenges because um, first it got uh, in trouble with the with the Asian community initially because I think a lot of people didn't know exactly what he was making, um, and once he got on you know their trust, he also had problems with um, getting uh, this sort of positive idea of um, of Asian culture in. Uh, to the masses because a lot of people expected um, Jack Burton to be the hero. They wanted him to be more of a hero and less sort of like <laughs> a blundering kind of guy. And so Stumbling there was a lot of, yeah. Yeah, and so a lot of people didn't understand where the comedy was coming from and all the little jokes. They didn't get the details of it all, but um, it's, I mean, as we are watching it now and, and later on, of course, people began to start to Im uh, appreciate the film of all ethnicities it just really was like oh wow look at look at what was being done here you know sort of recognizing uh, the storytelling they've they created a huge world in this story it's it, yes. like I, I imagine they could have gone and done tv shows off of this it, it would have had yeah. many, many seasons yeah uh, right, because totally. Yeah, they created a huge world um, uh, with this, and um, I, I'm I, I'm kind of glad there was never a reboot because I don't think they I don't think uh, Hollywood un, would understand, you know, why what made this movie such a cult classic, you know. Wasn't Kim Cattrall? Oh in yes, that? Mm -hmm. oh, wow. she was yeah. so, she was excellent in this. Um, and this guy brings up a good point. Um, Snake Plissken inspired Big Boss, Solid Snake Ooh, from the Metal Bureau. I could um, see Solid that. Street. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Yeah, and um, him the, and Leon always talk about that. That yeah, yeah. the strong yeah. silent type, deadly silent mm -hmm. but deadly. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's been a long time since I've seen um, Big. So long. Which one, Mikey? Uh, Big Trouble. I haven't seen it in a long time. It's been like, uh, I think, again, 30 years since I last saw it. Oh, wow. So it's like, you saw, last time you saw it was oh, probably at the theaters. Wow. Or oh, mm. I, well, I watched it a few weeks ago um, with um, on my channel as a watch party, and um, we had so much fun. So I urge you to, to see it what again. The, what, 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 what streamer is it on? Do you know? Um, 
I had it. For, it was from Amazon where I saw it. But okay. um, let me see. If I do a little quick uh, Google search, maybe sometimes it'll tell you where you can watch it. You know I what? I I, I, actually, I actually but... never. I never saw Escape Escape from L.A. I never saw it. Oh yeah, it's a it's hilarious. It's just if you're if you're it's nothing like uh, the uh, escape movie at all. Uh, oh, Escape from L.A.? Yeah, yeah. Never, yeah, never said it. Yeah, you're going to probably be disappointed. I mean, it's real campy. It's, yeah, yeah, it's more for fun. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, played for it's fun. It's a parody. Yeah. It's, a, it's like a parody, if you did, will. They, did John do the sequel? Yeah. Yeah, he I did. Feel, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can see Big Trouble on Tubi for free. Um, there may be some commercials for that. Um, and I think every you could pretty much buy it anywhere. Um, but Tubi is the only place you I think you can see it for free. Okay, um, but with with commercials. Um, and it is one. It's it's fun watching these films again after all these years. You know, it's been a long time. A lot of times too, you discover things even now. Yeah, that you didn't realize back then. You're like, oh, oh, I see what they're saying there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, because I think there there are a lot of movies that I saw when I was a little girl that now um, they have a completely different meaning to me now. I, I I'm understanding what the you know what some of the subtext is is saying in in, in the story. Um, whereas as, as a little girl, I thought it was cute or cheeky and made me laugh or whatever. Um, didn't understand a lot of the deeper meanings. Sure. Yeah. 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 You, you like, like for me, when I was younger, mostly what impressed me was the action sequences and you know mm -hmm. things like that. And oh, yeah. You, order, you realize, the, you know, the other stuff going on and what they're really talking about and what this is, you know, like actually supposed to be implying or, you know. But also too, like I don't know about you guys, but did like uh, when you were a kid, you guys watched kung fu movies, right, on Saturdays or oh, yeah. Sundays yep. or Saturdays? Yep. Yeah. So this was one of the first few, um, like actual Hollywood movies. Big that, budget. Yeah, that celebrated, you know, kung fu. Um, there, there were a few others that that we we know of that probably had a few things here and there but this was the one that really like um you know had had it on display for sure and, and that was sort of um you know unique and absolutely cool uh the visuals like seeing the two girls with out there you know with blank pupils and those costumes i was like yeah. oh my god this is so cool and uh you know all of the you know the special effects rate the the guy who looks like Raiden who was in uh, probably um, probably who, was yeah was <laughs> in, <laughs> he was influenced um, he in, did influence the character of Raiden but seeing that character really was incredible and one of my favorite kung fu um, uh, stars is in this call uh, his name is Carter Wong. And he plays the guy who, you know, breathes in very deeply and he keeps breathing in and breathing in and he explodes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. He, uh, I, I love um, some of his earlier work that he did. And one of my favorite movies from him was uh, a movie called Born Invincible. And it, it is uh, an insane movie. Okay. Insane movie. It's so good. Um, but yeah, the, the, these, um, just to give um, these actors a platform, um, it was just so saying something uh, incredible at the time. Uh, talk about diversity and all that stuff. They did it in 1986, <laughs> and 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 John Carpenter is is responsible for it. Yeah, um, for well, that. really ahead of this time when you think of you know Shang Chi, Legend of the Ten Rings. It goes back to Big Trouble in Little China. Um, mm -hmm. These, that's why I want to see these films again to see like what they influence now because you really, you really can see how, what kind of fingerprints they left. Oh yeah, um, in right pop culture, you know. Sometimes right down to the dialogue, right down to the dialogue, um, and it, it's it's wonderful to see. I never consider it like if I see um, a director use a specific dialogue from mm -hmm. 
um, from a movie. I don't consider it stealing. Uh, I'm borrowing, but it, it's also homage. Homage, yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I like that. Because if Kinda you know. Like the Flash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The I mean, homage so if, <laughs> to the Snyderverse, to Jack <laughs> Snyder. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. And uh, it's a really good movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait to everybody's saying how good it is, and it just looks like it's going to be right up my alley. Um, but yeah, yeah. The, the, these are these are great. Like I was watching um, Excalibur, and there was like certain dialogue pieces that I found in the Justice League movie, and I was like, hey, yeah, <laughs> I'll, take <that. laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Well, you know, I was yeah. I was watching something I liked last night, I liked very much, that shares a theme of a John Carpenter film, and that's Ooh. next on my list, and that's They Live, um, yeah. which is now considered one of the best of John Carpenter's film, very satirical, um, and just a really funny movie all the way around. Oh, yeah. But again, it didn't do very well at the time, I think it was misunderstood, but mm -hmm. people look back on it now, what a great movie that was. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was watching Secret Invasion last night. Uh, it's kind of like a serious version of, of They Live, like a sense of um, paranoia. Like yeah, you don't I'll, know the person. You don't next know to who's you. who. You don't know who's who. Yeah. You know? And a I lot think, of similar themes there. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, now, now I think about it retro, uh, I doesn't get enough credit for his comedy. You know, oh, yeah. It's great. I mean, Big uh, Trouble is hilarious. Big it has Trouble, some hilarious Dark, scenes. Dark Street are all very funny movies. That he doesn't get cursed for you people know for horror, but he can pull off comedy pretty well. And They Live is just hysterical. Oh yeah, <laughs> love that poster. And, and how much did you know? Like now, yeah, that is a great poster. They Live. All the messages confirm, obey. Oh, yeah. and, you know, people use that in marketing and whatever. Yep, yep. Totally. They had all a, from They Live. They live yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's great. I mean, it's also to like social comedy uh, or social commenting done in the scope of a story that doesn't feel like it is um, attacking uh, anyone. But at the time, he did make it because he um, was disturbed about Reaganomics and yeah. uh, Reagan being in office and the the focus of greed and consumerism yeah. in in culture, and it 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 was an a cute cheeky way of doing it. And I'm no. not sure, like, if you could do something like that now, if people would just become offended by that. But I found that the fact that he wove it into a story that made sense with the aliens, you know, trying to, you know, inhabit the world here. Mm -hmm. I think it, it, it was really um, just excellently done. Um, I, I don't think it's a 10, but I do think that the idea itself is brilliant, brilliant, just absolutely brilliant. And I, like, I remember seeing that for the first time and I was a little girl and I was like, really? Wow, that is so cool. And now seeing it as an adult, I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it was almost like a, a warning, right? And, and, and yep, look where we are, man. Everything's about consumerism and greed and he yeah. was on the right track. Yeah, it really sucks, and you, know? you got to give them credit for them having the um, the cojones, the cast of Rowdy Roddy Piper as the lead. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yes. love that, love yes. that. And 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 the thing, um, he talked about that. He said that the reason why he cast him was that he looked like an average person, uh, but you know, um, he he didn't want to get someone who was like a really great actor necessarily. Or, or he didn't want to get a wrestler for the job, but he wanted somebody who could do the, who could be physical, but also seem like the the every man. Like he and, just walked off the construction site. Like yeah, he, yeah, he was yeah. Working, you know, construction I, for a living or something. It yeah. worked. It worked. He did. I think he did a great job, um, being that he's you know not a you know thespian or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think it was a great, uh, great choice. Um, another thing I wanted to say about this movie in particular is that um, a lot of people think the fight scene that they have, that epic fight scene, which yeah. is insane, yeah. um, that they 
um, did it improv, improv that. There's a lot of people who think that that was an improvisation. And it wasn't. It, it took three weeks to for them to wow. come up. Uh, I'm sorry, three months. Three months for them to plan Damn. everything out. That's and a lot it, of work. Yeah, oh three God. months. And God does not know improv. Yeah, and it took uh, three days for them to shoot. And um, on top of that, they weren't at some point during the whole the fighting. They actually just really did hit each other um, in order to make the the scenes look good. So. <laughs> that there's a lot baked in it's not just uh smoke and mirrors and i just threw it together and i think that's why it looks so uh brutal and devastating and, and horrifying yeah. to see them fight it's brutal it's nasty they're really hitting each other um and 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 i think that realism really comes off on screen we're just like when is this fight gonna end <laughs> It does. It goes on and on, and you're like, "Dang, how are these guys still standing?" Yeah, I guess realize something. He cast a wrestler, uh, just like James Gunn, Dave Bautista. So there's another thing in common. Oh wow! <laughs> <Good point>. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I, I love they live. Um, I saw it on. I didn't see it in theater. I saw it on. It could disappear pretty quickly in theaters. Um, I didn't see it once it got on videotape and. I, I just could not stop laughing. I thought someone was just so funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's and, more relevant now than ever. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And um, don't forget, you know, the drones. The little yeah, drones flying yeah. around like oh, they got yeah. nowadays, spying on everybody. And that's mm. is already thinking about that. That's crazy. That was 87, right? Is it 87 where they live? I think 87 or 88, maybe somewhere I can in there. find out right now. Maybe 88. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 88 now. 88, yes. 88. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 88. And let's talk about um, this one for a minute Prince of yeah. Darkness, Liquid. Yeah. Now Look that one I, I did not see, so you guys will have to fill me in on a, <laughs> all of the details on that. Um, man, it's well, been over thirty years for me. But I saw this on cable around nineteen ninety, I think it was. Um, uh -huh. I remember being, being very dark film. I remember that. Oh yeah, it's a horror movie for sure. Yeah. Um, basically, it's a church, and they just, um, discover. Um, <laughs> I mean, it sounds cheesy, but if you're in the context of the movie, it isn't. But they're like liquid evil. Oh, this is the one with the green thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and it's just you know, Alex um, Cooper is in this movie. He's right? one of the vagrants that yeah. are outside of the church that they're you know kind of trapped in, mm -hmm. and um. But one of the best scenes in th this movie is like the mirror scene, because um, the 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 demon or the Satan or whatever you want to call it, you know, makes like come to actually through it, and like with the hand and everything, and it just it'll make you double take, you know, when you first came home, um, and not want to look in the mirror because it was freaky, man. Ooh. Yeah, it was really yeah, funny. It was, uh, <laughs> Make you afraid yeah. to look in the mirror. And yeah. that, that, that's another one, like we were talking about, where you know you're like he likes these movies where you're kind of trapped and you're trying to get out. Well, it's really on display in Prince of Darkness. Now, you know, like um, Mikey, I haven't yeah. seen it recently either, so I, I can't remember every detail, uh, but I do remember that it is, it's intense. It has that, that yeah. really dreadful feeling throughout the whole movie. Well, you know? that, that It's one of those films that just it sticks with you because of, the, of how you feel when you're watching it. Um, it, it when, you, when you're done watching oh, it, it's kind of heavy and, um, and it's just, it just it's, it gets just creepy is what it is. Is that not necessarily gory or anything. It's just creepy. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, I just want to. Um, this one also bombed, by the way. <laughs> he he's got a long list of bombs. Um, yeah. For some reason, just movies people don't get his movies until they come on the cable and they watch it like, over and over again. Then again, they they, they become popular. They yeah. become popular, yeah. right? Now, there's mm -hmm. one film he did that kind of made up for the fact that the thing bombed. Um, and that film oh. is my all-time favorite John Carpenter film. Um, is Christine? I, oh, I, I, oh, oh, okay. 
<laughs> Stop everything, we everybody. That was a super hit back then. This in the is day. my favorite movie, okay, of, of his. So. Same here, same here. Oh, my God, Christine. Christine, Christine, Christine. <laughs> and I didn't even know it was a John Carpenter movie when I saw it. Uh, I just... His, he always pla plasters his name right on top of all of the titles. And I didn't even know. I was just like, <laughs> then after the fact, I oh. found out, like, oh, shit. Okay, so let me see if I can find out. There was a reason why. Um, okay, so um, it was back in 1978 that he decided that he should have his name on top of all of his films yeah uh, which a lot of other um directors don't do but he's he de he decided to do that because yeah. he said that you know the name recognition uh for as being a, a director you mm -hmm. take the responsibility for um you know uh, the film being a success or a failure and he wanted to put his stamp on every movie he did mm -hmm. um and and that was like from watching people like hitchcock and and other other big directors putting their names on their film mm -hmm. so i i thought that was uh unique because a lot of him his films mm -hmm. do have his title uh, his name right above the title. And so, you know, like it's John Carpenter's vampires, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah, again, again, being ahead of this time, it's branding, which is so common now, uh, even with the internet and everything, you know, like it's not, it's not Gikasi, it's Mikey Sutton's Gikasi. So <laughs> there, there, there's yeah. my name attached to it. Um, a little bit of history here. I read Stephen King's novel, the Christine, Oh, um, yes. In 83, it was the height of my Stephen King obsession. <laughs> um, I love that book. I read that book in three days, which is, which is very fast for me. Mm -hmm. I could not put Christine down. When I heard that John Carpenter was drugging, I did cartwheels. Like, uh, my favorite horror director is doing Christine, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Words cannot say how much I love this film. Oh, um, good. It's a very faithful adaptation to the book. You read the book. They're both very, very much alike. Even has some of the same dialogue um, that's in the book. Uh, I love the soundtrack. You got all the songs. Uh, from oh, the yes. Book in the film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love the look of the car. Um, I love the acting. Um, who's that? Keith Gordon? I think Keith yes. Gordon was, he was just brilliant. Oh, he's in, on fire. He's on fire. I mean, he just yeah. really looks like he's possessed I, by the car. I can't imagine anyone else playing that role. I can't even. I, I, I tried. I was like, okay, who else could play the? Nobody, nobody can play that role like he did. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's just uh, insane, and, and the way he's able to play it, like really um, nerdy and quiet, and uh, and very humble in the beginning, and yeah. then mm -hmm. turn turn it all the way up to eleven. Yeah. And yeah. be like a fifties like biker boy like with the jacket and everything i was like yeah. oh my god i love the 50s influence uh, on this um, yes yeah in this movie. oh for sure it yeah. was wonderful the well he becomes, he becomes the dr jekyll mr hyde thing i mean he really becomes a different person he looks yeah. different acts different yeah you see the arrogance against blowing through him you know and, and what i love the most retro uh oh, what were you saying, Mikey? Oh, yeah, say that again. Oh, he's got a good mic drop right now. Uh -oh. Yeah. So the there car, yeah, the car feels like she's got her own personality. Oh yeah. Oh, for the sure. Way, the way yeah. that Carpenter dragged it. <laughs> See, I'm saying her. She said that's how I think it was. I'm calling the car her. Yeah, I mean it, the the opening where she's you know we're we're seeing her going down the assembly line. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We know she's alive because she's already yeah. starting to play music. And yeah. the first mm -hmm. song she sings is Bad to the Bone. Bad to the Bone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, <laughs> she was born bad, period. Um, which is a lot different from the book, where the book had the car possessed by um, the dealer's br uh, brother. Yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. He, he was an actual spirit that had yep. control over Arnie, and yeah. it, it was. Uh, I, I, I love the change that the, yeah. the car was just 
uh, had was its own entity. Yeah. Um, and had this relationship with whoever was her driver. Um, and, and whoever came into, you know, all the passengers as well. She had relationships yeah. with them. If she didn't like them, she'd try to get rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <pretty much>. yeah. <laughs> They're getting taken out. <laughs> and I was so there. There's one scene where his best friend is like, yeah, this car smells and it's this and that. I was like, oh no, the, <laughs> she's going to get you. Um, and luckily she doesn't. And, um, but it, it's one of those. Uh, moments where I was really I was afraid for that kid um, yeah. because of the way she she um, she was a she was a character that loved mm-hmm. Arnie um, and, and showed him love because uh, you remember the first time when the the car gets completely crushed and and just demolished by those bad guys uh, he says uh, show me and then yeah. she's like she turns on a few, you know, those headlights yeah. and she is showing him how much she loves him by getting her, you know, getting herself back yeah. into her former self. And it's like, it, it's just one of those movies where it's like, I wish people could understand how incredible, uh, incredibly written this is on top of Stephen King's work. The yeah. the script yeah. itself was it's just so good. brilliant. Yeah, just it's a great movie. Brilliant. And when you say when you oh. when you describe that scene as the show me scene, I mean that the, the the music pops into my head that that synth music that I'm pretty sure it's Carpenter. Yes. That's his totally style right there. Oh yeah, it's like it starts so playing in my head after all these years. It's like how effective it was, <laughs> you know. But I just remember the, the lights come on. I'm like, that's what a badass scene that was. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. Another scene that was really it left a big impression on me was um, the main bad guy. Um, the, the, when he it was his turn to kind of you know yeah. for for Christine to take care of him. Yeah, he, it was done so simply. It was just him running, and you hear his footsteps, and he's running, and he's looking back, and he's running, and the tension. You want the car to get him. Right, <laughs> because he was a <laughs> jerk before. You want that car to get him, but at the same time, it's like, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? Uh, and just you know, it, it just was done so well, the, just beautifully paced. Um, and and I think that's one thing I would say is is John Carpenter's uh, superpower is his pacing. He knows how to Very good point. slowly. Yeah build something up until you get to the crescendo moment where things happen and you're like, you know, it, you know, it, it feels satisfying. Um, but yeah. also it, it, it can, it, it scares you a little, you know? So yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, it yeah. takes you on a thrill ride for sure. Well, yeah. It just well, constant. Yeah. It doesn't do like a, a peaks and valleys. His is always like, like you said, it's a constant Ride, 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 ride. And then you get the, the climax and then boom, you know, the ride's really going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Really one, one thing that him and Stephen King did uh, equally well in Christine is that the movie is both a horror film, but it's also a fantasy. I mean, yeah. you have a, that car is basically your, 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 your own you little punisher. It. <laughs> you know? Oh my God. You said wish it. Fulfillment, wish fulfillment, right? Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> and I was Arnie when I was little, like when I was, I was, yeah. you know, in, in school at the yeah. same time, Yeah, I was, I was Arnie. I was, um, made fun of and bullied and all that stuff. Same here. I yeah. mean, and nobody, thank goodness, no one pulled a knife on me. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> like yeah. They do in the movie. Um, and I was like, dang, things ex- escalated <laughs> really. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it was it was pretty bad. And I was like, I was always like, I wish I was bigger and stronger and could fight back. Yeah. Um, and not only that, and win. Um, so this movie was like uh, the nerd that got beat up and was teased. He He won in this really awful way, but he wasn't. Yeah. He know, got his nope. revenge. Nobody was ever going to mess with him or and Christine. That's all. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like my bodyguard. Right, took your bodyguard to the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Happens to kill people. 
<laughs> and I, I think that's another reason why I love this movie is because of the relationship between Arnie and Christine is so yeah. deep. Like it is yeah. a loving relationship between two yeah. individuals. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know it, it's it's really um, kind of a, it's a love a tragic love story. Um, yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's, well, it's yeah, a, the, a the Romeo book, and Ju Juliet tradition it, type it, of film, you know. It's, 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 that is a car. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's the both book and the both the book and the film. Um, so that this kind of weird kind of a romantic subtext, romantic subtext in him in the car, and and I get it now as an adult looking back on yeah. the opening dialogue in Christine. I'm not sure if you remember this. The same as the book, um, where he where he where he meets the old guy that gets in the car. Oh yeah. And, and he goes, um, I love the smell of a new car. Uh, yeah, so it's like a smell of a pussy. It is, remember that one? It, so automatically, the car becomes feminized already just just from that scene alone. And yeah. Like, as an adult, I really, oh my god, that really that sets up already the the romantic angle. Exactly. Him in the car. I didn't even think of that until now. Mm -hmm. Like, well, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he literally falls in love with the car. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and what what I was really the beautiful car to the car is hot. Let's face it. Oh right. yeah. Oh come on. Uh, it's like lady in red, right? Lady in red. Where exactly. Yeah. I, red I, I'm going to insert my joke here. My wife tells me I look at my car like I used to look at her. And if you see my car, you probably know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. You know. She always tells everyone that. I'm like, babe, stop that shit. <laughs> 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 see, oh, like, I, I yeah, see, I get it. Man. I gotta yeah. see that film again. I gotta see. It's been too long. Oh yeah, uh, I mean. Um, yeah, I need a refresher so many, for sure. It's just one of those movies that um, I, I do try to watch it at least once a year, um, and mainly I I just love the way Arnie like loses it. I yeah. just love the way he loses it. Like he is almost. Like okay, and then he just loses it as he mm -hmm. goes further and further down this path, and um, and how his friends are struggling to save him. Um, they 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 are trying to reach him, trying to like save him from the inevitable, and uh, they can't they can't reach him. It's it's almost like he's on a drug, um, and and that's it's sad too it's a tragedy it's a tragedy but it's a a wonderful storyline i i i can't get enough of christine one of my all-time favorite movies it is um, a, um, um, I like through the themes okay um, mikey i think we lost him for a second that's okay uh, He's about to drop something, drop something hot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, he'll be back. I know. It's like a bully kid that gets revenge. It's kind of like Harry in a way. Uh, yes. where uses her powers against all of her tormentors. And, oh, and, yeah. And mm -hmm. same here with his car. So I think like, Stephen King was probably bullied a lot as a kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. All you need is that, just that one avenue, you well, know, uh, to, and then like the feel oh, empowered basically. All it takes yeah. is one bad day, Dick Run. <laughs> one bad day, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> this guy no. busting my chops in the chat. Oh yeah, no. What's going on? I I hope they don't remake uh I hope they don't remake Christine and No. Yeah, I don't think I look even like if you watch the special effects, you probably know how they it was done. But to be very honest, if you really take all that you probably know about how they did it um, out of it, it's still amazing stuff. It's all practical. Yeah. They just oh, shot yeah. the footage backwards. Um, and it's like, oh, wow, that that looks that looks really good. That holds up. Yeah. Um, and like, I can't imagine like I'm sure <laughs> you could do stuff with CGI, but I. Mm. I do love the way this movie is. It was put together. The music, the tone, the pacing, um, everything. The actors. The it, it just it just works. Um, 
the worst uh, kill in the movie is Mooch. You guys remember that character? Yeah. Um, and they they. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. That's not in the. It's that's not in the movie. Is that during um oh well it is in the movie they mention it mm -hmm. um that mooch takes a big um dump on the car um uh, on christine and that's why she gets him first yeah. uh, because he he was the most despicable um actor you know disrespect of disrespect yeah. so he she got him first and I, I think it was very interesting that she crushed him and um, it, it, it was, it, it, it sort of spoke of, I think um, uh, Arnie says, you know, in, in the story, he says, yeah, isn't that what you do with, you know, the S word? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, so, yeah. and it was sort of like him also knowing, uh, but not really like, give, you know, revealing everything, but um, his revenge for what was done to him. Because he had to clean it that's that off the car you know yeah that's mm -hmm. right so yeah. it, it was it that that scene of him seeing her destroyed is a powerful scene when he walks in the room that i like the the acting that was done the acting that was done i mean he, i really felt like he really did like lose something at that moment um and and from then on he was no longer the same person yeah. Like you you couldn't reach him at that point. He was he was gone. He was mentally checked out already by that time. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Like I think didn't he like shove the girl? He shoved like shove. He's like get out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did, did, didn't he call his mom a bitch as well? I mean, he, oh my god, he slapped he his off, father off the chain. Yeah. yeah, he slapped his own father. That was like <laughs> what the, what the heck that? is going on? Oh, you know, I I hope they don't remake this something because no, it's, it's not, already it is, doesn't need to. I imagine a kid. That young buying a car that oh, is that gonna be little? Oh, I mean, yeah. How could he even possibly exactly make Which, that look realistic if he's like some yeah. lower middle class guy? No way you can buy a car like that. Yeah, you're, gonna, you're, you're gonna make your you're gonna make your seventy six Pinto now, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would yeah. not work. You gotta yeah. have that that Plymouth, you know. Yeah. <laughs> another another piece to it that is kind of interesting is that some of the things that happen in the movie are like really grown up and and i know i hear a lot of people saying oh yeah you know a lot of these teen movies and that that might be the reason why we haven't had any teen movies lately is that teen movies um uh that a lot of people were complaining that they wanted to see more kids or more accurate teens in teen movies which is mm. kind of gross because a lot of those teen movies did push the envelope. They did yeah. have sexual oh, yeah. content. They did. Oh, yeah. I yeah. wouldn't oh, feel yeah. comfortable if a real 15 year old. Real teenagers doing that stuff. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I don't mind my teenagers looking like they're 30 so, a, a little bit. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? You never thought of it like that. Like, yeah, they would have to have them. They couldn't anyway. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, and yeah, I, that's another like movie art form that I think is pretty much gone because I, I haven't seen a, a good teen movie in the last like decade, actually. The, the, I mean, that type of audience is mostly on TV, you know. Oh, yeah, you're the, right. The you're teen, right. Teen you're right. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, but yeah. not movies mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. They're on the CW or something. <laughs> yes, yes. Exactly. The CW is all that at that point. The CW, oh God. Call money talks, bullshit walks. <laughs> oh, man. Fucking um, Frazier, the American Pie. Yeah, okay. Um, so we let's do a um, quick rapid fire on his yeah. later later movies here. Sure. Um, let me see. I actually like this one a lot in the mouth of madness. Um, have you seen that one? Yeah, it had Hay Hayden Christensen in there. Uh, and I can mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Saw this one. He was a kid screaming in the car or, uh, on the bike. Was he? Was, Shit. I mean, that was, that was Hayden Christensen. <laughs> so, yeah, this one is um basically it's a, his love letter to like what HP Lovecraft. HP Lovecraft, yeah. It was yeah. okay. I mean, I didn't mind it too much. I don't remember that much. I remember Hayden Christensen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. so it, it's about a, a writer who's investing, like basically looking into the the writer who writes these stories, and he starts getting sucked into the basically the world of the H like H.P. Lovecraft type of you know stuff going on. And it, it's a good movie. Yeah. Not the no, it's not the greatest. I'm not gonna lie to y'all and say yeah. it's like you know. It's great from New York or the thing or something, but it's definitely worth it's to watch. It's watchable though. It's watchable. Yeah, it's definitely worth to watch. Yeah. It's John Carpenter too. Yeah. yeah. Like you can tell it's a John Carpenter film. Um, <laughs> Village of the Dam. That's I a know, good one. I see. I never I saw that one. Yeah. 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 It, this These one is a remake. Kids, man. It, it, this... It's good. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, that one was a, a remake um, of uh, pretty much the, it, it wasn't really that different from the original. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought it was really good. Yeah, it's, it's enjoyable. And then um, okay. vampires. It's it's good, but um, it's cheesy. I like uh, this movie a lot. Do you like it a lot? Yeah, I, like I it, do. Yeah. Yeah. It's James, I it's James, it James good, Wood. It yeah, um, James Wood is really hilarious in this. Um, kind of being like the muchismo, um, yes. you know, leader. But uh, he's he's. Uh, got sort of a, a strange moral value. Um, <laughs> you know, he's not n the nicest guy, but he gets the job done. I, I saw this with my mom. And so <laughs> you know, the, the, the scene with the, who's the actress who played um, Laura Palmer on Twin Peaks? Oh, I forgot uh, her name. I, yeah, she's, 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 she was. Uh oh. She was tied up naked at the bed. Yes. Oh yes! Uh, my mom was like, "Well, why is she naked?" And, <laughs> and James Woods like, "Like, yeah, yeah. Why is she anything? They just wanted to throw a nude <laughs> scene in there. There's really no purpose for it, you know." But I just just to be edgy. Yeah, to be edgy, I guess. Yeah. Really like, yeah. Why is she? I'm like, well, she's she was tied up because she had been bitten, but they uh, she hadn't turned yet. Yeah, but um, he stripped her down though, like. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know why he took off all her clothes. <laughs> that was not the part. <laughs> why did he take off all her clothes? <laughs> well, I, could, I think we know why, but we're. Oh, yeah, we know why. Why? <laughs> I just remember that uh, James Woods was, was great in this movie. Um, so I guess for him alone, but it was, a, it was a funny movie, I thought. I thought it was a different take on vampires, too. It was, yeah. Um, oh, I, yeah. I, I really enjoyed that. It's a, I like vampire movies, mm. but it was very, um, it has like a really grittier edge to, um, yeah. the, I mean, it, it has the classic, um, um, you know, carpenter touch to it where it's like mm -hmm. maybe a, a yeah, yeah, like it, it's like, vampires, but shot through his lens, you know, yeah, and okay. a yeah. Western kind of, you know, Ooh. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, I, I thought vampires felt inspired by Near Dark, which is one of my favorite vampire movies. They both, had, they both had that kind of western type of feel to it. Um, Near, Near Dark rules. That's another. I've never seen that one. Oh, yeah. it's intense. It's not scary, but it's intense. It, it's oh. good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. It. It's really great. I love the. Um. That it was sort of. Um. Uh, like. An, almost like an action movie. Um, oh yeah, way, a lot of action. The way, yeah, the way it was set up, and it really never stopped. It just kept going. And it almost felt like it would be a continuation of the um, Salem's Lot. If if there was ever like a, I know there was a return to Salem's <laughs> Lot. We could we could ignore that, but um, like <laughs> if there was like an actual like continuation, it would be sort of like that, because um, the main character after. Um, Salem's lot was um, very much like a hardened individual at the at the end of that movie, and so I feel like James Woods um, really embodied that kind of hardness. He's seen a lot. He's he's experienced all sorts of different vampires, and there there was just something that was like a wounded animal in in his mm. um, in the way he kind of did everything. He was not taking any more chances. And he just was like, it was just, he was really strict about the, his rules and he was cruel. And, 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 and oh, I love that. I love that he, without giving him a backstory, they were able to develop this character and make him um, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. There you go. Yeah. 
and this is actually funny. James Wood character t Jack Crow telling <laughs> the prince <laughs> she laid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, politically incorrect. Politically incorrect, yeah, totally, you know. But I never see that now. <laughs> it's called the real world, you know. It's not it's not put through a filter. This is how it is, and whatever. <laughs> well, guys, I think. Um, well, yeah. Fraser had a question. We will answer him. Yeah. What is um the worst John Carpenter movie that you you think on your list? And I I can't really think of one that's I can't like think bad. of one. I can't that's think of bad. One. They've all been watchable. I mean. The weakest one to me is the Mouth of Madness, but even that's watchable at least. Yeah. So I can't think of one. Yeah, I don't I, have any. You don't have any? No, I mean, well, yeah, well, it's I, Ghost, I Ghost of that, Mars is pretty good too, and people like really tear that movie up. I enjoyed it. I thought, no. Oh yeah, I heard that one might be that might not be good, but I I didn't see it, so I didn't see it. Either. Yeah, yeah, I, saw it. <laughs> I, I barely remember it. But I don't remember it being terrible or anything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you know honestly, and this might make, make for me, it might be um, Escape from L.A. for me. But, oh, okay, yeah, I could see yeah. why. Yeah. yeah. Is, compared, is, compared to the first one, you know, yeah. Yeah, compared to the first one, it, it's yeah. this is, a, and yeah, I, I get it, you know, like Socks was saying, it was satire, and, and I get it, but it just wasn't working for me. Yeah. I think he was going through something when he was making that movie um, because yeah, it's not like any of his other movies at all. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it definitely felt like um, again, a parody, but it, it didn't, it, it didn't have any of that, um, it, you know, the, the tension uh, of what was uh, already, you know, laid into his other films. So yeah. I even wonder too, if he like, maybe he was thinking, he was just doing it on purpose, like as a rebellion. Like, oh, you think it's going to be like Escape from New York? Oh. Yeah, but I'm going to do all this other type of crap and then see how you take it, you know? Because that's the type of filmmaker he is. He's a renegade for sure. He's a renegade, yeah. He is, he is, isn't he? He follows yeah. his, well, his own path. So. so it might be, it might all be intentional for yeah. a reason. Um, Skywalker thinks um, Ghost of Mars um, gets hate because of Ice Cube. Okay, yeah. Okay. Good, good, good theory, yeah. I, I I don't know. I, I always thought everybody liked Ice Cube, but maybe I somebody. thought so too. But I mean, I I didn't see the movie, so yeah, I, you can't you can't talk about it. I you can't, know, you can't be like say... oh, these flash people talk about a movie you haven't even seen. Yeah. <laughs> so Fraser has a, Fraser has a great idea, and I think it should be our next episode. Retro, oh, the Stephen love, King. Love, love to have you back, Retro, for next week. Um, oh, okay, let's, yeah. Let's do, let's do a I'm Stephen free. King special. Let's do the best and worst of Stephen King movies. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, um, a long list of Christine's on there again for me. Um, yeah, there's, that's there's, definitely. Well, there's so oh, many. I got, I got one. some for the sure. Stash, I got Stand by Me. Um, you know, I love Silver Bullet. That's one. Oh yes. Okay. The, the first two articles. That, my the, the first two articles that ever got published, Dick Ron, '87, um, were Ferris Bueller's Day Off uh -huh. and Maximum Overdrive. Oh, great. Maximum was, Overdrive. That's a great a one. Oh, movie. wow. And so, in fact, I'm going to have you post the articles um, next week. When, uh, I was <laughs> nice. like 19 years old, man. My, my first published work, I was 19. Yeah, I saw Maximum Overdrive and I saw Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Both great movies. I love Ferris Bueller's yeah. Day Off. That's oh, hilarious. my God. That's a, that's a great movie all the way around. Yeah. Uh, but Maximum Overdrive was the only film he directed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was um, That's right, under damn. the influence yeah. for that. Uh, one, you right? can tell he was. <laughs> but it was the I Green Goblin, man. I, I know it. that's right, brother. <laughs> so, thank you, Fraser. That was a great idea because uh, Fraser, you did good. I'm gonna give Fraser a round because usually everybody picks on Fraser. <laughs> and just be able to talk about Salem's Lot. Oh, oh, classic! Oh my god! Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> Yes. You might need to <laughs> section out 30 minutes just for me to talk about <laughs> <laughs> Which had one of the creepiest scenes. You know what I'm talking about? The, one of the creepiest scenes ever. And I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. the, the bedroom window scene. Yep. Which is, that's scary. Oh, yes. That scared the hell the out of me. The fog and the floating like, oh dead my vampire. God. Dude, there's that a, was scary as hell. There's <laughs> at least like 20 <laughs> creepy scenes in, in the whole thing. And and that's one of them. That's one of them. That's just one of them. Uh, I like yeah. too that um, they made the the main you know vampire a Nosferatu. Yeah, 
He was just this Nosferatu <laughs> evil vampire, man. It's yeah, there's great. two there's two projects because uh, was like uh, was it a TV movie? Um, so there's two movies that had scenes I cannot watch again. Um, one of them is scary, the other one is Sam lot because they scared me so much as a kid. They, I, <laughs> they still unsettled me. Like I, their memory is so vivid. Like I never saw Carrie a second time. Never really? Not a second. I saw Carrie in the theater as a kid. Um, you know, and I'll explain why next week what that scene was from Carrie. All um, right. Salem's lot scene was that that literally just could not I could not sleep. I was just, <laughs> uh, but that floating kid, man, no, 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 no. And and he was smiling. <laughs> Who's smiling? Who's smiling, no. like, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> oh yeah, b before we sign off, um, retro. So tell everybody about your channel who who may not use it. Oh, you know, for, uh, right yes, yeah. uh, my channel, um, Retro Nerd Girl on YouTube. Um, I basically do a lot of retro um, movie reviews. Uh, right now, I've been doing a lot of live streams. Uh, on Wednesday mornings, I do uh, a mm -hmm. modern take um, mornings where I kind of go through the news and talk about recent events and 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 tell it through my uh, retro um, view or <laughs> my retro lens. Your retro um, lens, yes. Your retro lens, lens. Skywalker yes. said. <laughs> <laughs> Retrospective, if you will. Um, and, then, there you go. Uh, yeah. and then on Fridays, I have a retro talk of a subject matter of my choice. This Friday, I'm going to be talking about uh, time travel movies. And, and this is the second part in that series. Um, then on Saturdays, I do a watch party of a movie. Um, and this week, I'm doing time, uh, Ice Pirates. Awesome. Yeah, that's like cool. 84, <laughs> man. 84. Great. Time. Yes. Oh, I love that movie so much. Hey, what's up, Super Bro? How you doing? Hey, Super Bro. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, We'll, we'll talk, but maybe you might come out more often on Pandora's box. If oh, you thank to. you, we'll guys. I, I had we'll so talk. much fun being here today. It's a blast. And... Your, your knowledge is like, guys, so extensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we only like covered like maybe a quarter of what she had ready to go to. Um, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had three pages, but I can scare you. <laughs> we we uh, can only do sequels, the retro. So okay, just... yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we could actually just do you know a what? movie, we, too. We should, man. whenever you watch some of these films, Let's do a sequel after I after I uh, if you want to be rewatch them as well. Um and oh, look through them now, look at them now as in, in a modern as an adult. Looking look let's let's watch these films. Mm -hmm. See how how far advanced John Carpenter was in predicting some of the things that are happening now in the present times. Oh yeah. Both in real life and pop culture as well. I think it's it's a good way to uh, look at it. But see hey, hey. next week. <laughs> Hey Frazier, it's about time you have a woman on there, Carl LL. Hey Frazier, it's about time you have a woman in your house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, you had nice. it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being a dick, Frazier. Don't get mad. Oh my god, so oh, hammer. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so wrong. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this was fun. I really enjoyed this. I love this. And so um, thanks everyone for tuning in and yeah. watching. Thank and, you so um, yes, thank oh, and if you're watching guys. later. Leave your comments. Um, I'll, I will be back, I think, Friday night for a witching hour. So we'll see what happens. But I'm pretty sure I'll do that. Yeah. Mikey, well, Mikey's everywhere. Mikey, what, what you got going on? Uh, you got see mag.com, but I want to make an announcement. Um, so the good Austin and I are going to be launching a new YouTube channel. Oh, wow. show. We're launching a channel. Um, that it won't be a live show or anything. It'll be basically um, scoops and... Uh, Kind of retrospective on things in the past. Yeah, there'll be more details later. But the good Austin um, and I have agreed to do this uh, channel together. Oh, and, uh, okay. I'll be, doing nice. the, I'll be doing the voiceovers for this, and Retro would love to get you involved in this somehow as well. Uh, especially when we start doing um, spotlighting um, earlier genre films, and fantasy, horror, and sci-fi. I think you'll be a perfect voiceover person. Well, this I'll discuss it with you. Also, okay. Retro Nerd Girl is going to be in Dreamwalker. Uh, comic book, she's an issue three. Um, obviously, so is Necron. So, 
thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of cool things coming up. <laughs> oh, when I when I, I said later, I meant later this week for a witching hour, Friday night. Yeah. So uh, no, not during not tonight. Friday and night. Skywalker and I have a um, night shift tomorrow night. So yeah, go subscribe to Skywalker's channel if you haven't, because Night Shift's awesome. All the bombs you get mm -hmm. on there, scoops. All thinking of, please subscribe to Necron's channel. Get into a thousand subs oh, yes. as well. Um, yes. Like like with. A... Yes, please hit like and and subscribe. There you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you tune in, you know, just hit like, subscribe. I try to, you know, do a little variety over here, but yeah, you know, metal is my thing. I'm <laughs> <laughs> But I love movies too. And um, yep. oh, Saturday morning, Saturday morning, I will be doing the cartoons and serial watch along. From Ooh. it'll be on my channel at um, uh, it'll be nine central my time. So figure out your time zones. But we'll be doing um, starting season one of um, Justice League Unlimited. Mm. And um, those um, Justice League cartoons are just fire. Oh, man. They, they, oh, they, they I rule. Think, uh, I think Unlimited is my favorite because it has the question. I, I would have to go with Unlimited too because you just yeah. get to pull in so many characters. Yeah, yeah, I know. So many. They're all, they're all cool. Total yeah. like comic book nerding out because, oh, this guy's on it. Oh, this girl's on it. Oh, you know, <laughs> Jonah Hex. Come on, man. It's yeah, great. Yeah. I love Jonah Hex. <laughs> yep. Uh, Stephen King. Oh, yeah. We got to talk about Creep Show when we do that. I mean, definitely going to be on the list. All time favorite movies. Yes. I saw it 13 times, man. 13 times. It's like, <laughs> wow. Yes. That's how much I love that film. I, I, it's I thought, Father's Day, and I got my cake. I saw, I saw that. I think. Okay, I saw it four times in the theater. I saw it eight times on cable. I saw it on, on cable. VHS. Mm -hmm. I saw it on um, laser disc. I saw it everywhere. I could, like whenever it was on cable, I'd watch. I just love the movie so much. So that's on Mikey's hardcore. He had the laser disc back in the day. I know, I right? I had, yeah. a, video, I had, nice a, I had, I had a laser disc and I had a video disc player too. So I had, I, I, I really, I had a Betamax wow. too. So I had a Betamax in the VCR. Oh yes, that's what I, I forgot to bring up. Freezing yeah. cold takes is later tonight on the Good Austin's channel, and I believe yeah. we'll be talking about um, WB um, is apparently licensing programming yeah. to Netflix. So what a what an amazing yeah. concept. Yeah, there's uh, there's something uh, coming. Yeah, that's not the last, that's not the last one either. It's just the beginning. But anyway, <laughs> it's just mm. the beginning. Sale, uh, sale, so, yes, jail. And Netflix. so it begins. And so <laughs> right. it begins. So it begins. Yeah. So, sorry, Betas, but Skywalker was right. But <laughs> uh, go see Secret Invasion, guys. It's really good. Yeah, I need to watch. I think I'm going to watch that probably right now once we leave. Yeah. All right, everyone. We're just yes. going to do a, a hard out, whatever, cold out, no outro. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see, see you, you next week, man. All right. Later. Bye, guys.